Learning objectives include how to estimate or enumerate a microbial number or growth. Microbial growth could be estimated by direct methods or by indirect methods. The direct methods or direct counts are those where we um, look at the uh, number of organisms directly. Whether they are alive or they're dead, we, we don't care. So all what we do is enumerate them, count them. One method, as uh, indicated here, is the use of a counter chamber. It's a hemocytometer that is normally used in a clinical lab uh, for estimating the number of RBCs in a, in, in a blood sample. This is the same instrument we can use for counting the number of bacteria. So the bacteria are diluted and then placed into this a specific chamber, and this chamber has a, a specific volume, and then we can calculate the number of cells per volume. There is another machine. This is a mechanical way of counting, but there is an electronic way of counting the same number of cells in a machine, and that is called a Coulter counter. Uh, this Coulter counter machine basically also is used for blood samples, counting RBCs and WBCs. We, we can use that machine as well. There is another advanced version of this Coulter counter is called flow cytometer. So it is also electronically we can count the number of these organisms. So again, please uh, keep that in mind that this number, we do not care whether the bacteria is alive or dead. We just count them. And that is the reason we, this is a direct count. Then there is a membrane filter technique for water sample. Here what we do is we take, if the volume is more, the number of organisms are small or, or, or low, then what we do is we filter the, the large volume of water or any liquid in which we want to know the number of organisms through a filter. This is a filter assembly that we use. And all the organisms are retained by the filter. So this filter has a porosity, pore size, that basically does not allow the organisms to pass through. Water or the liquid uh, can go through trapping the bacteria on to the, to the filter. And then that filter is placed over Newton agar plate or other culture media. And then at the end, after the, this plate is incubated overnight in an incubator, you would see the organisms as colonies there on top of the filter. So this is another way of counting the cells. And here, this is a viable count. Only the, the live bacteria would be counted in this technique. Sometimes when membrane filters are used, this membrane filter, which has trapped these organisms, this filter can directly be stained with fluorescent dye and seen under the microscope. So as we are doing this direct count where we do not care whether the bacteria is alive or dead, uh, we use fluorescent dye. So after passing the, the liquid through the membrane, we stain this membrane with one of the, there are various fluorescent dyes that bind specifically to organisms, and then we can see the organisms under the microscope. We can count those fluorescent spots as number of organisms. But if we incubate this onto the same membrane, onto a culture medium, only the viable count would be available. Only those bacteria that are alive uh, would be able to grow and make colonies. So viable count can also be used uh, with another technique. It's a spray, spread plate technique and also a pour plate technique. In this method, the spread or pour plate method, we do is we take the, the sample and we squirt out the sample, like maybe one ml quantity or 0.1 ml, depending on the number of organisms there. And one way is a pour plate method. And that is that we use the one ml or 0.1 ml quantity uh, we use this to pour the, the, the culture medium, like the nutrient melted molten nutrient uh, agar, mixed with this. And similarly here, we can use the same quantity, like 0.1 ml or 1 ml, for spreading onto the surface of an already solidified agar. So as I mentioned earlier, that the pour plate method, uh, we mix the volume that we took out of the sample with the molten agar, and then we spread that into, uh, into a plate. In spread method, what we do is we take the same volume, 1 ml or 0.1 ml, and then with the help of a, a glass rod, which is sterilized by flaming, we spread 
with this L-shaped rod, spread the volume of the sample onto a solid agar. And then we incubate these two together, and then we can count the colonies. So the colonies would look like this. So we can count the number of colonies, and then it's just a calculation by count the number of colonies, multiply by the dilution factor, and that gives you number of colonies in the sample. So here, these two methods, they also give us a viable count. This method, where we use a dry weight or spectrophotometry, these are indirect way of estimating the number. Not exactly, but it can give you an estimate, rough estimate, which is pretty close to the number. The, the culture medium, which is liquid medium, where the bacteria are growing or microbes are growing, if we evaporate the water contents, we just leave the dry weight. And we can weigh the, the dry mass of the bacterium. And once we have, for each species or each organism, we have to, to weigh the mass. And then we have to calculate the number of organisms in that mass one time. But later on, if we, like we are doing some large-scale large vaccine production, we can, if we have established that this much weight is equal to this much number of organisms, then every time we need to make vaccine, we, we can use this dry weight. So one time you have to calculate the number. So there has to be a relationship between the dry weight and the number of organisms. But once we establish that relationship, then you can do the, the dry weight later. Similarly, spectrophotometry could be used. As we know that organisms, they absorb light. And uh, when the light strikes, some of the light is thrown away. And that is the, what is thrown away would not touch the sensor here in the spectrophotometer. And the, uh, the electronic circuitry that is uh, registering the change or the absorption of the light would be reflected here in a scale. And again, we have to, this is called OD, uh, OD value or optical density. So a spectrophotometer would give you an OD value but that value has to be correspondingly, we need to relate that with the number of organisms. So one time you have to do here also in, with the same species uh, that we want to work later on, we have to one time, we need to establish the number of organisms at certain OD value. So once we establish that, we can use it, we can reuse it you know, anytime we like. We don't have to uh, count the cells again and again. So these two techniques, they are very useful, although they, they do not give the exact number, but pretty close. There is another indirect way of knowing the number of organisms in like this technique, which we call the most probable number. Here what we do is we dilute the, the sample into five tubes, and we use 10 ml of that, that the original, this is the original uh, sample, this is uh, 1 ml, and this is 0.1 ml, and the, the total volume is 5 ml, uh, sorry, 10 ml here. 10 ml here, 10 ml here, and 10 ml here. But the original sample here is 10 ml, this is 1 ml, and this is 0.1 ml. And at the end, we incubate this for like uh, 16 hours or 18 hours, and then we see the, the growth pattern. We record that this is the five tubes are positive, here there are three tubes are positive, here is one tube is positive. And then statistically, there is a table available for knowing the numbers. As you can see, our code that we generated here is 531. So we would go into this table and see 531. Against this entry, it says the most probable number uh, in 100 ml is 110. And uh, this is the lower limit and this is the upper limit. So this is also a rough estimate, which we call most probable number technique. So in summary, there are direct methods of enumerating the cells. There are indirect methods of knowing that how many number of organisms are there in the sample.